Hello, I'm Olivia. Currently, I work for MVP Community, which is the community for the exceptional tech leaders with community leadership. I have been very active in organizing, empowering, inspiring, and encouraging people in tech communities for several years. What I'm here to do is to give you some real quick tips that I've learned. It's only for 10 minutes and 30 seconds has already passed. So please give me your full and undivided attention. So, let me share one instance first. I was working on resourcing speakers for the big conference and helping the team move forward. It was the large event and I have been working with several people who I've never met before and never heard of before. But we had exchanged many emails over the course of the several weeks prior to the event. As you know, naturally planning an event of this scale requires a significant amount of communication and concentration across many different channels. One day I got this email and I felt something different. In hindsight, I discovered that throughout the course of our collaborative efforts, we have built a trust the trust that each of us is trying our utmost best to get the jobs done, the trust that she is going to provide me with the most up to date and relevant information, which will enable me to move forward with any external people involved. You probably know how important successful communication and collaboration is in the community, let alone in your own jobs. What surprised me was actually I never really approached the communication as a matter of the trust before. Until now, I might have been thinking the communication is just all about the skills. Now, why is it important? It's because I felt the trust can make me feel eager to be a part of the relationship with a shared purpose and a willingness to rely on each other and want to fulfill my own personal roles and responsibility to complete the assigned task collectively. It creates sort of connection, a feeling of inclusion, of being on the same team, of understanding that inex inexplicable, warm and happy feeling of being and working together. Once you have this, your communication will be much more flow, much more easily and effortlessly. And finally, here goes my tips. How you could earn the trust for your successful communication and collaboration. First, be predictable. When you say you're going to get back to them and by when, please try to meet the deadline. If you think you're going to be a bit late, try to share that you're going to be late. Keep people in the room. The thing is, it's very important to be a predictable person. Don't let them be anxious about you and have to chase you or accommodate for you every minute. This will prevent your community or team from over communication as well. So second, be a good soccer player. Let me explain the second tip using soccer metaphor. Sometimes I saw the player encounter this problem like, hey, Nobody passed the ball to me, which means you didn't involve yourself enough to your teamwork or you weren't proactive enough in making yourself available. Stop blaming other teammates. Try to earn the trust and go get the ball. Then how? Demand the ball with your actions and words. You try to take responsibility and show the ownership and prove that it cannot be done alone and it's teamwork. You can preempt the situation and ask first and find how you can help the team and what you are capable of. But please be mindful that you also have to pass the ball. You have to ask for help when you need. When you can exchange the help and feel the co-working, dependability and reliability can grow from there. And here goes the last tip. I think to say that 
communication is difficult and somewhat obvious. The experience we have, how we understand something is very different. The ways in which our information is given and received is very different from person to person. What makes sense to you may be more complex for others. To avoid this, try to talk precisely. There could be a lot of lot of um, like tips for this, but let's just focus on a few here. First, um, try to provide your information with images or numbers to support what when you explain something. Let's say that um, you create a poster with a designer and you need to give them any feedback. And then let's say that you just say, mm, I want this to be more creative, some uh, like more vivid, or you say, mm, I don't like this font size, you know, could you make it larger? I think the designer would be really so frustrated to work with you, never knowing what's going on in your brain. Instead, it would be useful to provide an example um, image of the concept you're thinking of, any images closer to your idea. Also, don't ask something without why. You could have asked to make the font larger because 70% of our customers are 70 and they could have difficulty in reading with small fonts. So I think it's better to keep them larger considering the target audience. Also, when you need to deliver something complicated over email, it's always good to provide the context, deadline, and what the recipients need to do. I just put the example on the image. You can highlight the deadline and action required part, so people can figure out what they need to do by when. But be careful of not ramble on. Less words, less time consumed for the leader and the message clear in a flash. Concise and precise can earn the sort of the trust. We mentioned precisely, since you cannot let them have all the necessary information in the same place. Simple and clear request, minimal instruction with an identified conclusion and time scale. With this, we can all expect the same result. I'd like to conclude my presentation with the sayings by Stephen Covey. Yeah, trust is the glue of life. It's the most essential ingredients in effective communication. It's the foundational principle that holds all relationships. <clears throat> Cheer for all your successful communication and collaboration. <clears throat> and if you want to give me feedback about my presentation, please reach out to me. Thank you for your time.